Numbers 12 and 6 reads, And he said, Now give ear to my words. If there is a prophet among you, I will give him knowledge of myself in a vision, and I will let my words come to him in a dream. On the morning of Sunday, March 24th, 2024, I woke up from a dream that I had the previous night. And in that dream, God showed me an old school Windows screensaver application in the place of what normally would have been the Windows icon floating around on the screen. God replaced the Windows icon with a specific scripture. So now instead of having the Windows icons floating around on the screen, I now have dozens of this particular scripture reference floating around on my screen. And if I had to be honest, it wasn't exactly a scripture that I knew by heart. The scripture that kept playing over and over and over again was Revelation 9 and 3. I immediately woke up and grabbed my Bible to read it. Revelations 9 and 3 reads, Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. As I attempted to read on, God immediately stopped me and told me to skip down to verse 7. So for some reason, he didn't want me to read verses 4, 5, and 6. He wanted me to jump straight from verse 3 to verse 7. I wanted to be obedient and I didn't want to miss the message that he was trying to convey to me. So I immediately stopped reading after verse 3 and I dropped down to verse 7. If I were to read it in that particular order and omit verses 4, 5, and 6, it would read as follows. Revelation 9 verse 3. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as if it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. There are a few things that I want to mention before we move forward. There are more than 30 locust references in the Bible. And oftentimes than not, they weren't a good sign. They were usually associated with destruction and famine. One major example of locusts in the Bible was in Exodus, when locusts were the eighth of ten plagues that God inflicted on Egypt. There were four stages of locusts mentioned in the Bible. To give you an idea of just how sinister these insects were, I'm going to go over each of the four. So the first stage was the palmer worm, and that possessed voracity. Voracity means to devour in great quantities. The second was the locust, and that was known as the swarmer. Now, to swarm means to move or assemble in a crowd or to hoover. It was known for its multitude, which means that it traveled in large numbers. Then we had the canker worm. That was the devourer. That's the licking lotus. It licked up the grass of the fields. And then last but not least, we have the caterpillar, and that's the consumer. It had a huge destructive effect. To consume means to deplete, exhaust, and to waste. There are three areas that they devour, and I'm going to go over those three areas with you. I'm going to be reading some scriptures and it's going to be up to you to do an in-depth study on these scriptures. I'm just going to point you in the right direction. And then you're going to need to do some Bible study on your own personal time. So the very first area that they devour is they eat up your knowledge. In Psalms 14 and 4, it says, Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. So right here, God's people are eaten up as bread. In 2 Timothy 3 and 7, it says, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This spirit hinders the learning of the word of God. 
Okay. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Isaiah 5 and 13 says, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. So right here it shows that lack of knowledge leads to bondage. Matthew 13 and 19 says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. So right here, this tells you that demonic forces through these spirits can snatch away the knowledge of the word of God straight from your heart. The second area in your life that these spirits will devour is your flesh. So in Psalms 27 and 2, it says, When the wicked... Even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. So right here, it shows that they inflict with sickness and disease that can affect your body. Eating up your health. Deuteronomy 7 and 15 says, And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. The third area that these spirits can devour are your finances. They can consume your finances. So in Haggai 1 and 6, it states, Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye not filled with drink. Ye clothe, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Malachi 3 and 11 says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So right here, God promises to rebuke the devourer in the area of your finances. Last but not least, and I actually think this is the most important scripture out of all of these, is Joel 2 and 25. And that states, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army that I sent among you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You guys need to praise him right now for that scripture. You need to give him thanks. You need to meditate on that scripture. You need to be begging him to restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Now, did God reveal to me his exact plans, detail by detail? Absolutely not. But what he did do was he gave me a sign. The most wisdom filled thing that you could do at this point is go to God about this. Don't you dare ever take my word for it or anyone else's for that matter. You go to God on your own, individually. You seek answers in your own personal time with him and he will reveal them to you. This is just a dream that he gave me and he urged me to share this dream with others. You could potentially go to God and he reveal additional pieces and parts of the puzzle that he hasn't even revealed to me. I would encourage you to seek his face and spend some alone time with him in your secret place. And here are a couple of prayer points that you can meditate on if you don't know which direction to go in. There are five and number one states. My father, I destroy and neutralize powers of the palmer worm, the locust, the canker worm, and the caterpillar spirits in the name of Jesus. Number two, my father, I command the palmer worm, the locust, the canker worm, and the caterpillar to stop eating up my knowledge in the name of Jesus. Number three, my father, may every palmer worm, locust, canker worm, and caterpillar eating up my flesh with sickness and disease stumble and fall now in the name of Jesus. Number four, 
my father. May the devourer consuming my finances be rebuked now. I command you, let go of my finances in the name of Jesus. Number five, my father, restore all the years of the palmer worm, the locust, the canker worm, and the caterpillar has eaten in the name of Jesus. Amen. For a day.